name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to our celebration of confirmation this evening. It's great to be able to celebrate this sacrament, particularly between Easter and Pentecost, just as the whole church is beginning to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and the coming of the Holy Spirit. You who are going to be confirmed this evening need to open your hearts, to open your lives to that gift of the Spirit so that the, the Spirit can enter into you. Those of us who have already been confirmed, um, we, we ask the Lord to renew that gift of the Spirit to each one of us. For the times that we refuse the gifts of the Spirit, for the times that perhaps anger, uh, obdurate hearts, um, jealousy have blocked the Holy Spirit from entering into our lives, let's ask for mercy and for pardon. I confess, Almighty God, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, when Israel was a child, I loved him, and I called my son out of Egypt. But the more I called to them, the further they went from me. They have offered sacrifice to the Baals, and set their offering, smoking before the idols. 
I myself taught Ephraim to walk. I took them in my arms. Yet they have not understood that I was the one looking after them. I led them with reins of kindness, with leading strings of love. I was like someone who lifts an infant close against his cheek. Stooping down to him, I give him his food. My heart recoils from it. My whole being trembles at the thought. I will not give rein to my fierce anger. I will not destroy Ephraim again. For I am God, not man. I am the Holy One in your midst and have no wish to destroy. The word of the Lord.
listen to the voice of the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus instructed the twelve as follows. As you go, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils. You received without charge, give without charge. Provide yourselves with no gold or silver, not even with a few coppers for your purse, with no haversack for the journey, or a spare tunic, or footwear, or staff, for the workman deserves his keep. Whatever town or village you you go into, ask for someone trustworthy and stay with him until you leave. As you enter his house, salute it. And if the house deserves it, let your peace descend upon it. If it does not, let your peace come back to you. And if anyone does not welcome you, or listen to what you have to say, as you walk out of the house or town, shake the dust from your feet. I tell you solemnly, on the day of judgment, it will not go as hard with the land of of Sodom and Gomorrah as with that town. The Gospel of the Lord. sitting down nice and comfortably I'm going to be really awkward and ask those who are going to be confirmed and their sponsors will you stand up please just so as we can all see exactly who you are and who we're focusing our thoughts and our prayers and who I'm, I'm, I'm sort of focusing my words on tonight so thank you very much if you like to sit down so do we earn respect or is it something that we're owed? Is it something we can command, demand, deserve or earn? Sounds a bit like a, a, a trailer from Question Time, doesn't it? But what caused me to pose that question, first of all to myself, was the result of looking at the confirmation service that we're about to celebrate in a moment or two. I was struck by all the gifts that we pray will come upon those who are going to be confirmed. So you who are about to be confirmed, um, be ready to receive a whole package of gifts. Open wide your, your arms, take up all that's going to be offered to you and just listen to what those things are. We pray, give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And it's that last one especially, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, that uh, comes to my mind, mainly because it sounds a little bit strange to our 21st century ears, doesn't it? The fear that we're talking about here is what you might call biblical fear, which you could interpret really as reverence or respect or awe founded on gratitude. For part of my priesthood, 
I worked in the inner city of Salford and Manchester. Now just the mere mention of the names of these places conjures up a vision of dark satanic mills, urban waste and dereliction. However, they were for me, I have to admit, some of the happiest days of my ministry until of course I came to this diocese and that's all changed now. This is where my happiness and joy uh, is. But while I was um, in that part of, of Salford and Manchester, I was working with a, a daughter of charity, a sister of charity, who ran a drop-in centre for the, the down and outs, the alcoholics, the marginalised, the drug addicts who gathered around the city centre. And she did an incredible job. And although she was only small, uh, no one ever dared to cross her. When she spoke, the most hardened person of the road listened and listened respectfully. Each night she took them in, gave them something to eat, a bed to sleep in, and laundered their clothes overnight so that they could be ready to set off the next day. I was really filled with complete admiration of her because no matter what state they arrived at night, she'd take them in and care for them setting them on the road the next morning. However, she was no pushover, and she told them what she thought, but always respectfully. I asked her once how she managed to persevere in the work and do it with such joy and such grace, for she knew that whatever she did for them, the next night many of them would turn up again in the same state, if not worse. And I'm afraid I would be tempted uh, to give up on them, feeling that I was being taken for a ride. And she smiled at me and she said, Jesus washed his disciples' feet and told them and told us that we had to do the same. Even if they have lost their self-respect, she said, it's my duty to give it back to them at least once a day. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Right at the beginning of this homily, I asked, do we earn respect or is it something that we're owed? Is it something we can command, demand, deserve or earn? At the most basic level, I think that human beings have a duty to respect one another. <coughs> And in that sense, we have a right to demand it. But here I'm not talking about professional respect. If someone does a bad job, then it's a bad job. If someone is incompetent, then they're incompetent. But every one of us has the need to be recognised as a fellow human being with certain rights and duties common to all. For us Christians, though, respect is only the bottom line. We know that all of us are created in the image and likeness of God. We know that the world and everything in it was created by the Father through the Son in the power of the Spirit. And when we contemplate these things, we should be filled with a genuine fear of the Lord in the sense that we recognize that God is the source, the giver of all good things. And just as we respect and reverence God in his creation, so we respect and reverence each other as part of this awesome work of creation. Now the reverence that I'm speaking about is, simp is, is simple, it's not, it's not very complicated. It's to be found when we welcome a stranger into our midst because we know that the Lord is present in them. It's to be found in visiting the sick and the elderly and the housebound as Mary did with Elizabeth. The message of the Gospel tells us that the new Holy of Holies, the new holy place, is the human person. Humanity is sacred. God is to be found in the human person. And so in visiting, welcoming, helping someone, we're doing all this to the Lord. We don't have to wait for heaven to meet God. He dwells in each one of us. He is with us in the sick and the poor and our neighbour and in the whole of creation which he fashioned and gifted to us. So, do we deserve, do we earn respect, sorry, or is it something that we're owed? 
Is it something we can command, demand, deserve or earn? Well, my experience and trying to live out the gospel have taught me that we're part of God's people. We're members of the church, the body of Christ, and therein lies our real strength. If you believe something with your heart, if you hold it to be true at the very core of your being, then you cannot help but live it out in your life. If your faith is vital to you, if you're proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord, as you're about to do so and say so, then how can it remain private, locked away in the domain of your personal preferences? At your baptism, you were freed from sin and given new life, and that life is about to be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. May you be open to accept all the gifts being offered to you today. Wisdom and understanding, counsel and fortitude, knowledge and piety, the fear of the Lord, but especially that gift, the fear of the Lord. Reverence, respect, reverence for God, reverence for creation, reverence for your brothers and sisters, and reverence for yourself. So can I ask those who are going to be confirmed and the sponsors please to stand. I'm going to ask you to renew your baptismal promises. You especially are going to be confirmed, the sponsors, but all of us, all of us are to answer the questions that I'm going to ask you. And it's a very simple answer, it's I do. I normally say you know, I'm, jokingly I used to say, I'm going a bit deaf, so really I want to hear it loud and strong. Well, I am going deaf, so I really do want to hear it loud and strong. I want to feel a wall of sound coming down the church when I ask you to renew your baptismal promises. And so in the name of the church, I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
We stand now for the prayers of the faithful. Let us turn to God and pray for those who have been confirmed, for those they are joining in their mature faith, and for the needs of the world. For all those who have been confirmed today, may their strength and faith be always a source of joy to them and a guide to their actions for the rest of their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear us. Us. For their parents and sponsors, that by word and example they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For our families, that as the faith and witness of our parents has brought us to this day, they may continue to be blessed with a strong faith a sure hope and deep love for the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious and For the world, that all people who have one Maker and Father may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters, with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious and Let us pray in silence that we may all respond to the Spirit of Jesus in our lives. We ask the prayers of Mary, our mother. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our prayers and to keep us always in your tender, loving care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
God, the Almighty Father. And in all our separate sacrifices of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all of his holy church. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Terence Patrick, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, Lord, your servants, whom you have been pleased to confirm today by bestowing the Holy Spirit, and keep them in your grace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs 
to eternal life and may trust and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> All glory and honour is yours forever and ever. <coughs> At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who says your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
Let us pray. Instruct, O Lord, in the fullness of the law those you have endowed with the gift of your Spirit and nourished by the body of your only begotten Son, that they may constantly show to the world the freedom of your adopted children and by the holiness of their lives exercise the prophetic mission of your people through Christ our Lord. Amen. Which I'd be seated just for a few moments. Just want to say a few words of thanks. As parish priest here, I'd like to thank our altar service and especially the choir who have come to uh, lift our celebration and help us. Very, very grateful, especially to the choir. As um, a parish priest and also on behalf of my fellow parish priests, I'd like to thank the catechists who worked so hard throughout the year to prepare our confirmation candidates for today. Uh, many of you have been meeting for months. It started on dark winter nights, and I know it's a very proud occasion for the parish catechists of the five, six, seven parishes represented here um, this evening to see our young people confirmed. So thank you to the catechists from all those parishes from this part of Hull. Well done, and thank you to the families, of course, also the parents, the sponsors of our, of our young people, um, without whom we would not be here. Uh, so thank you for all you have done. And finally, our great thanks to the bishop, Bishop Terry, who is our chief catechist and our father in Christ for coming down from Middlesbrough for this evening for the Confirmation Mass. It is good for us to be here. If you'd like to stand for the blessing, please. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Bow down your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God the Father Almighty bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. Amen. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended, go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God.